good morning it's been a minute since I've been on live if you guys give me just a moment I am gonna share to another platform and if you could do me a favor if you come on and do the same I'd appreciate it so guys what's everybody been up to so normally for maybe about a good year and a half I've been coming on regularly every Monday and Wednesday <clears throat> um, at 11.30. And recently, maybe about two weeks ago, I actually made an announcement that I wouldn't be coming on live regularly on Mondays and Wednesdays because I was working on some things for you guys behind the scene. And that is actually my 3D success Academy for women in business short plug um, for that I'm still sharing out guys you guys please uh, do the same I'm trying to make sure I don't see it posted yet from my other device but guys we're <clears throat> making some mindset shifts on today and I am super excited about it this is a topic very very near and dear to my heart not only is it near and dear to my heart but I actually love and enjoy it because of the transformation um, that happens and that's shifting to abundant thinking shifting to abundant thinking so I'm gonna do a quick um, introduction and then I want to tell you guys how I actually got on this abundant thinking kick, how it uh, functions in my life and has been like this amazing blessing, how, um, how it helps my clients. It's, it's been amazing, but I'm going to share with you guys as soon as I can get this to share out for me, um, where it all started for me and where this abundant mindset thing um, came from and how it became a staple in the work that I do with women in business. Um, I'm going to do an introduction while I'm trying to get it together on this end. Over here, I still can't get it to show up. Hopefully you guys can. Let's see. So I am Tanya Wilson Cherry. I am a growth strategist, business coach, and mentor to women in business just like yourself helping them brand, build, and profit in their business, but also in their life. That's, that's the important part. I function from a three-point perspective, abundance mindset, which we're going to talk about today, uh, personal growth and business building. I feel when those three things are in alignment, you can completely soar, right? Um, so firstly, about mm, 2001, I began... Going through this season, I, well, I'd actually started going through it <clears throat> a little bit before then, but at this time, I started researching my family tree. And during that time, I found um, some similarities about the women who were generations before me. And there were some specific things that stood out to me that were like this common theme that I began to see with the women in uh, previous generations in my family. And they were connected to their relationships and they were connected to their money or the lack of their money. It sent me on a path to really dig deeper about um, poverty because it is what I saw transpiring in the lives of the women generations before me. Now fast, let's go back just a little bit before I actually started researching my um, my family tree. I was about 25 years old, which has been over 20 years ago, y'all, right? And I remember asking myself, like, is this, you know, what life is, is like? And I remember, it's so funny because I remember actually asking myself that a couple different seasons in my life. And I'm learning, or I soon learned, that when I was asking myself that, 
it was normally time for a new level. It was normally time for something to transpire, transform, you know, me to go into another transitional phase of growing my life. But I was about 25 years old when I think that was like the first time. Well, no, but I'm not, I'm not going to go too far back. Um, but it was one of the times that I remember deeply that I began like asking myself, like, you know, why am I here? What, what's my purpose? And at 25, I, I took a moment to direct that question to God. So it was no longer just a thought in my head um, about my purpose. I, you know, I asked God, like, what is my purpose? Now, mind you, I was not saved at the time at all. Um, one second, guys. Because I'm going to get this to work. Let's see. Let's go here. I'm going to share it that way. Hopefully, you guys are, are sharing it, sharing it out. This is going to be real, real good. So get your friends, your family members. If you're looking to go to your next level, this is going to be the one right here. I actually, because I hadn't been on in quite some time, I said I would come on and do a really, really in-depth uh, training with you on today. So be sure, of course, this thing is taking all of this sweet time, my dear. Here we go. It's letting me share. I thank you guys for being patient with me. Um, if you come on the replay, you can fast forward a little bit. Don't leave because it's going to be real, real good. Like your thinking is going to shift. And you know, when we change our mind, we actually change our life. And that's my goal and my intent. Um, one of them for today for you. But um, yeah, this thing is going really slow. I'm not moving past it. I got a goal. I said it's something I want to do and I'm waiting for this to actually come up. I hope you guys are sharing it. But at 25, I began asking um, God the question, not just me. And I share with you all that I was not saved at the time. And I I heard God in, in my spirit. And a few of the words, I won't tell you all of it, because I believe that some of the things that God tells us about our vision and our destiny is not for everybody, Right. You guys got to learn that it's not for everyone, not in um, necessarily out of the wrong season, right? It's not for everyone in specific seasons. But a couple words that I heard God share with me at 25, it included the word wealth and help others. And so when I began researching my family tree and I saw these dynamics with, you know, unfortunate situations with, you know, many of the women generations before me. And I started connecting the, the dots. And I said, well, what's, you know, what's so similar about, and if you're on with me, do me a favor and share this out. If you've been on with me before and you know that um, I bring value, I'd love for you to share this with someone else who could also um, get some of the good good, right? So anyway, I, you know, I said, what are these similarities in the women from generations before me that I'm seeing that many of them are having pretty much the same thing to transpire in their life? So I found that it was, you know, relationships were very similar, the dynamics of their relationships and um, their income, their economy was really similar uh, as in poverty. So in me taking notice of those things, I began to study um, relationships just on my own. Now, I wasn't a, I'm a certified life coach as well as a business coach now, but I wasn't a certified life coach at the time. I was just trying to get my life. So here's a plug too. For those of you who want to teach, coach, and train, I think it's super important that you also walk out the steps of doing your own work because it actually allows you to teach, coach, and train, mentor, whatever you're going to do on a whole nother level, right? I believe that you should get in a space where you can not only be coached, but coach yourself. And of course, I've created a platform for that. But um, I began to study wealth in particular because poverty is the opposite, wealth is the opposite of poverty. And I began to study relationships. And there were some things that I learned about um, 
how wealth was created, how poverty was created, the effects of poverty. And so it's really a big part of what I do in my consulting business, Renew Full Circle. I'm so glad that I gave myself permission to really rock out my brand um, in a very authentic way, a, a way that's very authentic to me. It has blessed me so much to get centered, to, to really define my own brand clarity, which is what I help other women do in their brand, um, because I walk in a measure of fulfillment with what I do now. So it is my heart of hearts to teach women as it relates to wealth and relationships and be able to help them become aware of how those things impact the results, even in their business and definitely in, in their life. And so a lot of what I do, I'm thinking about the women before me. Um, as I began to study, I began to notice, although my situation was much better um, on the outside <laughs> than some of the women before me, I still notice where some of those same uh, situations or habits were like creeping in, you know, to my life as well. So it became part of my life's work to unlearn some of the behaviors that were passed on uh, throughout my family. And I began to notice uh, more quickly it operating in the lives of others. So I am actually on for three reasons this morning, and I have tons of notes because I really, really, really want to teach this heavily. Um, I'm on for three reasons. Number one, I am on sharing this topic this morning because as I begin to learn about wealth, um, and many of us, you know, we learn wealth principles, but one of the things that sometimes defeats us is that we don't learn about poverty thinking. So we'll learn the wealth principle, but we may not know the poverty thinking behind um, reaching the wealth principle. And so it's like, how do I know all this stuff? How have I read all of these things, but I still can't seem to get past this, or I still can't seem to get to my next level. So I am going to share in my, um, in this mindset shift session that we have, I am going to share and highlight poverty thinking because I think it is super important if you ever want to shift completely into abundant thinking because we can speak abundance, right? And and one thing about poverty thinking is a lot of times it's hidden, guys. A lot of times it's things that we've been doing forever. We've seen other people do. The majority of the people around us are doing the same daggone thing too. And so we don't even recognize that that thing is what's holding us back. And so on this morning, I said I'm here for three reasons. One of them, many people I understand are offended by things that I share. I get it. I understand it. Look, I was offended when I began learning about poverty thinking and looking at myself and saying, you, you've been living like this for a minute and you, you thought this was cool. So at 25, I was sharing with you guys that I was asking myself, okay, like what is my purpose? Now, at that time, I was young, I didn't have children, I wasn't married, and I was making a really decent salary. So I was traveling, shopping, partying, going to the club, and that's when it's like, okay, is this, is this what it's about? It's got to be more than just this. And although I was making a de decent sal salary, paying my bills, I could travel like I wanted, um, as I began to study wealth, I learned that I wasn't necessarily implementing wealth principles, right? Because... I mean, just because we can shop or we can purchase material things doesn't necessarily mean that we're building or even creating our wealth. My uh, mentor, one of my mentors at that time, gave me a book that began to like break down some of the walls of what I thought about money and, and things of that nature. Now, at the time, I didn't fully read the book. And the crazy thing is, guys, I... Um, some years later, when I really got serious about wanting to read the book, I was, was I married or in a relationship at that time? I think, I think we were dating at, at that time. And I wanted, you know, my, well, wasn't my spouse, but he was my boyfriend that turned into my spouse. But I wanted him to be involved in the process of the book too. But he wasn't as interested in it as I was, right? And so sometimes when we have people that are connected to us 
who don't find interest in the same things that we do, we sometimes put our interest on the back burner. If you've ever done that before, put me in the comments. So mind you, I'm learning all of these things, but one of the missing pieces to me actually, you know, shifting into that abundant space was my connections. Now I share with you all that I studied about relationships tremendously because I saw um, the impact that uh, that common thing with the women in my past were facing. I'm like, okay, all of them seem to have kind of like, not kind of, horrible relationships. Like, is this part of why their life was going the way that it was? So I began studying relationships and, you know, I began to um, look at my own because guys, I had standards, right? Like, you know, I, I wasn't saved. Okay. So, you know, the standards that I have now are definitely um, more honorable than the standards that I had then, then, but it was no first date stuff going on. You know, I had the 90 day rule before Steve, you know, or even longer before Steve made the book. So I had standards, but even underneath those standards were some things that I didn't understand, that I didn't know to look for that would definitely impact my life tremendously um, later on down the road. And this is one of the reasons why if you follow me and you come on, you see that I'm constantly talking about abundance mindset, our thinking and relationships. But in that, I know that I will share some things that people are offended by. I told you guys I was offended learning it, right? So I'm on for three reasons. Three reasons. I'm on for those who may be offended by what I share. I really would like for them to understand the heart of why I teach what I teach, why I coach what I coach, and why I share what I share on social media. Now, if they don't understand, it's not going to stop what I'm teaching and training, right? It's not going to stop that. But I do want them to know the heart behind why sometimes I just come straight with no chaser, right? And why they may even be offended because we are often offended about things that we didn't know right? Because those things require us to take a look at ourselves, but it's all from a space of love. So that's one reason that I'm on um, this morning. The second reason that I'm on this morning is to give you a thought concept or some thought concepts. And I'm, I'm getting frustrated with this thing over here because it still hasn't moved yet. Let's see. Did you guys share? You guys click like somebody share. I saw you click like. I appreciate it. Good morning. How are you? I think it's letting me, because I am determined to get this on my, here we go, other page. <laughs> Thank you guys for your patience. Okay, it's sharing it. And then I'm going to turn that Wi-Fi off to make sure that we stay super, super connected over here. Okay, I think it's sharing it. Super. Okay, great. So I said the second reason that I'm on is to give you a thought concept or some thought concepts so that you can be aware and cast down and also replace any poverty thoughts, thinking, doing, actions that you may have been doing too that you weren't aware of. Listen, one of the things that I say is if we don't own it, we can't fix it, right? If there's no way to, to fix something that we won't own is a problem. But, what, but I'm also aware that some of the things that we need to own in order to fix, we aren't even aware of. So I'm coming on from a space of awareness. Awareness has been amazing in my life. And there were a lot of things that I thought I was doing right by the world's view or society's view. I was. But when I look at the majority of the people around me who are working extremely hard but still not getting anywhere, even when it comes to the kingdom, when I look at people who were prophesying and decreeing and declaring and still broke and still, you know, going through all of these situational things. I'm like, wait a minute, something, something is, is not right. So I share with you all my plight at 25. Um, hey, Earlene, how are you, dear? Uh, 
my plight at 25 when I, you know, and stopped asking myself what was my purpose and I asked God and I heard him say, although I wasn't saved, I heard it in my spirit. I heard the words wealth and I heard the words help someone, right? And so because I was not saved, one of the things I did not do is I did not go further into what God was sharing with me in at that time. So it took me a minute, but I'm here, right? And I, I, I know that um, when we hear things that we haven't heard before, sometimes it can be offensive. But I promise you, this is from a space of love and a space of awareness. I told you guys that awareness has been one of the most beautiful things that has happened in my life. And one of my goals, like lifelong goals, is to always walk in awareness always be seeking new levels of awareness because I believe that's how we really and truly grow. And my third reason for coming on this morning is to invite you into my 3D Success Academy where you can take the concepts that I'm teaching this morning and really learn them at a much deeper level, apply them to your life, not just your life, but even your business and actually see results. So the 3D Success Academy is a year-long opportunity. And some people might be like, a year long? But listen, whatever those thoughts are that you're having that are keeping you in the situation that you're in now, you didn't get them the last 30 days. You did not pick up those thoughts 30 days ago. So it is going to take you more than 30 days to retrain your brain to really even grasp the concept. Because sometimes we have to say, you know what? I do do that. I do do that. Because sometimes we will deny it. We'll be like, mm -mm. I don't know what she's talking about because I don't do that. That ain't for me. But guys, when you're in a space where you're really ready to grow your business and your life, you're willing to get in a space of awareness. So not only are uh, we going to focus on abundance mindset principles inside the academy, but we're also going to focus on you being able to earn more revenue. One of the things that sometimes keeps us in poverty is we think we're going to save our way to wealth. I'm going to say that one more time. Now, I'm not saying it can't happen, right? But the goal becomes to save your way to wealth instead of learning to earn more revenue while you're you're saving as well. So the academy helps you with your brand, your business, and your life, creating new um, income streams and, and revenue looking at your revenue and really being able to see how you can profit. So those are the three reasons that I'm on with you this morning. And now I want to share what I came to talk about. So the main goal here is to shift you to abundant thinking. But before we can ever get to abundant thinking, we have to realize where we were using poverty thinking. So I'm going to go down the list and share some things with you about poverty thinking that you may not have been aware of. I'm sure there are several that you had not thought about. This, many of them are things that I was doing that I had to relearn, I had to unlearn and relearn a new principle or a new you know, thought process uh, behind it. So oftentimes these are some things that occur when the poverty spirit or Poverty thinking is in operation. Now, I'm going to share with you, this is going to hurt some feelings. I know it is because it hurt my feelings as well. But I told you guys, we cannot fix what we don't own, right? And we can't even own what we're not aware of. And see, our thinking is often the last thing that... that we often want to change the logos, the websites, the pretty pics, right? We want to change, uh, we, you know, we want to rebrand the business and, you know, buy something new, new piece of equipment or whatever. Hey, Linda, how are you? We often want to change those things. And the mind is normally one of the last things that we change because a lot of our true thinking is in our subconscious mind. So it's not out front, right? It's those thoughts and things that we think that we don't even know we're thinking. So I told you guys, this might hit home just a little bit, but please know that I'm coming from a space of love. And then before we leave, I'm going to, I'm highlighting poverty thinking right now, but I'm going to go back and counteract the poverty thinking with some abundant mindset principles. Now, if you are a kingdom believer, God has left so many keys and keys are like principles 
for us to gain wealth. And the world is using those principles all the time. But oftentimes, the religiosity of church and what we're doing at church gets in the way of the actual principles. So we laugh, dance, shout, you know, run around the church, you know, the hype of it all. And we never really learn the keys and apply them. So I am here to break the back of poverty by highlighting some of those principles and making them practical for you, right? Is that okay with you guys? Somebody put in the comments, that's okay with me, if that's okay with you, and then do me a favor, share this broadcast out. I put on my post earlier that this was going to be fire, like I meant that from my soul, right? So oftentimes when you're thinking about that subconscious mind, I love the mind too, guys thoughts that we don't really know that we're thinking it's kind of like in the heart and that's the soulish ram so when we're going to church and we're doing our thing we think and we're going to get our spirit fed when in actuality our focus should be to get our soul fed because our soul is our mind our will and our emotions and everything that's transpiring in your life right now the you know whatever point you're at in your finances your relationships all of those things are centered around your thinking they were around your thoughts. Guys, listen, I was floored. I've been studying this for probably 10 to 15 years now. I'm also a certified life coach. And as a life coach, what we do is help you create futures bigger than your past. So we don't necessarily deal with your past. We may say things that, you know, may highlight your past or make you aware of that's where this thing came from. Right, so that you can create something bigger, and then I help you strategize, shift your mind first, and then create a strategy that's bigger than your past. So, here are some things poverty thinking one trait of poverty thinking is you're irresponsible. I told you guys this is gonna be a little heavy, but I'm telling you guys, I had to walk my own self through it as well. So, you blame others, you blame the government, the stock market your spouse, the fact that you now have kids. Um, you, you might say things like, this is just how God made me. This is my lot in life. Those things like that. Responsible. I mean that you have not yet stepped into a space where you're prepared and willing to take full responsibility for your life. I told you guys this was heavy, but I promise you it's coming from a space of love. Are y'all with me? Y'all tap the screen. If you're with me. So if you find that you lack the um, the maturity to take responsibility for where you are and you're blaming it on external fac uh, faculties or factors, it's, it's poverty thinking. Because that means that you're giving your power. God says he gives you the power to get wealth. That means that you're giving your power to external things. Y'all don't hear me. And so I share with you guys as I began to research my own family tree and I looked at the women in my life and the unfortunate situations they found themselves in, a lot of them had things very, very similar. And I'm sure because, see, this is the thing about when we, when we hear something and when we actually get a revelation on it. It's two different things, right? So Maya Angelou says, when people know better, they do better. I love that particular statement, but I changed it around. I said, when things are revealed to people, they do better. Because it's a lot of stuff we've been knowing for a lot of years that we ain't changed. Lord have mercy. There are a lot of things we've been knowing for a lot of years that we haven't changed. And sometimes it requires us to get a full revelation on that thing for it to cause us to actually Implement something different and shift. You guys feel me on that? So poverty thinking, um, you, you're irresponsible. Now, I, I could go into several ways of, you know, what irresponsibility looks like. So one of the things we do when we're using that, when that poverty spirit is in operation, we have an excuse for everything. Lord have mercy. We have an excuse for everything. Now, I am not... Um, downplaying anything that you may have gone through because there are outside circumstances that affect our life. 
There are outside circumstances that are beyond our control that happened to us, that we went through, that may have been a little traumatic as kids. You know, we might have drove down the street, got in an accident, lost job, whatever, right? So there are some things that happen that impact our lives. But the difference in the poverty thinking and the abundant thinking is how we handle when those things happen. Y'all don't hear me. I told y'all this is going to be good, and I, I'm just getting started. I am just getting started. So I haven't been on with you guys in a while, and I just said I'm going to come and do a full-on training, and I'm going to teach something that's so dear to my heart, hoping that you guys can remember this conversation that we have on today because it's a conversation. You guys can comment. Um, let me know how this is um, impacting you and please do me a favor throughout the broadcast share it share it in groups that you think women will find value and it's not that i don't service men in my coaching business because i do have a few male clients but i'm a woman right so i know there are some things that we face i know there are some ways that we think that i will be able to serve women like you on a much higher level so you are my um ideal customers you know women are so i'm not like leaving the boys out, right? Um, I know they come and eat, you know, from the table as well. But I, mo I mostly serve women because that's where the heart for what I do in my business begins to grow, you know, and evolve for, for my coaching. So if you are angry at money, that sound weird? When I say angry at money, it may mean that you may look at some people who are wealthy and start having these negative conversations about wealthy people. They just money hungry. Um, they still, you know, all kinds of, you know, the conversations that, you know, we have before we shift our mindset about, you know, what real wealth is. See, if we really think about it, most oftentimes, wealthy people have done some things that we weren't willing to do. And not because they were immoral things. It just required us to do some work that many are unwilling to do. Now, y'all know I'm telling the whole complete truth. So instead of us being upset about what they're doing and judging them and, you know, having all these negative connotations because for one thing, we can never attract what we don't honor. Never attract what we don't honor. Because whatever you don't honor, you don't take the time to listen to. You're not going to take the time to under because you don't honor it. So that means you never get the information for the next level because of poverty thinking. Right? But oftentimes what I find, and one of the things I teach in my coaching practice is productivity. Because I believe that our work ethic make a huge difference in all the stuff that's going on. Right. So first our mind and then our work ethic behind it. And it's so many pieces to, you know, this particular puzzle. But if you're angry, you know, about money, then you're not going to be able to attract it to you. You're not even going to sit in the spaces. You're not going to be attracted to even investing in the things that are going to help you in the money area because you already have this negative connotation about it. Right. So you what will happen is because you're got like this angry like tone, vibe, frequency, flow about money, then you're not going to have the mind to earn money. Lord have mercy. You're not going to have the mind to earn money, right? And so there are things that people who are wealthier than you, they know that you don't know. But when you don't honor it, then you would never, you don't, you don't even want to go sit in a room. You don't want to be in the environment because you have this negative connotation about money. Number two, this is when poverty thinking is in operation. Y'all share this out because I know it's good. You're constantly complaining. Lord have mercy. Constantly complaining. So what happens normally when we're in a state of complaining, we're never in a state of solutions. I'm going to say that one more time. Whenever we're in a state of complaining, we can never be in a state of solutions. So this is what happens when we get in complaint mode. We find other people who will complain with us. Lord have mercy. We find other people who will agree with how we feel about money, how hard it is, all of that stuff. We find people 
that we can pour mouth. And I got the word pour mouth from my pastor. She said it one time. She said, you know, people who pour mouth is every time you see them, they're woe is me. And, you know, you, you're like, how you doing, girl? Girl, it ain't looking too good on, on this end, you know. It's kind of hard. I mean, it's like every time that you see them and what you're actually doing is you're attracting people who have your similar situation. And most oftentimes, if they're in the same situation, they can't help you. See, one of the things about 2020, the, the new year and the new decade is it's the year of the mouth. And so it's more pertinent during this season than any other season that you're going to attract more of whatever it is that you're saying, right? And so if you're constantly complaining, you'll never get to the space where you're in a space where there are solutions because you're walking in agreement with problems and not solutions. Lord, listen, I used to do it. I would find a girlfriend. Yeah, I don't hear me. I would find a girlfriend who I knew, because you know how you have like a few friends and you know this one will talk with you about this. And this one will talk with you about this particular thing. You know how we have categories? Somebody put me in the comments. Somebody, is it just me? We got categories. We got certain friends we talk to certain things about. But that friend that you knew that you can go and dump all your stuff on because she was waiting to dump all her stuff too. But by the time you guys really finished the conversation, you nobody really had a real solution, right? We just had a complaining party, event party, and we still in the same boat. So when you complain, you often, you know, find yourself looking for people that you can complain with. It's poverty thinking because an abundant mindset, and I don't want to go too far into abundant because I'm going to give you guys a list of that. I told you guys I'm going to really teach. Um, today, I'm going to take my time and teach this one. Um, when you're operating an abundant mindset, you're looking for solutions. Like you don't even want to be around all of the complaining. Like I can barely stomach it, right? Like my brain feels like it's going to to explode if I'm in the presence of someone, all they're doing is complaining. Now, as a coach, I understand people are coming to me with their life issues, their business issues. I get that, right? But once we come up with a solution, and I just can't sit on the phone with anybody anymore all day who is complaining or gossiping or because my mindset has shifted, right? Now, that wasn't something that I did a whole lot of with a lot of people even back in the day, but I did have somebody that I knew I could call and complain with, and they would gladly have the complaining party with me. It is poor thinking. The next thing, if the poverty spirit is in operation, if you're thinking poor, you spend a huge amount of your money on entertainment. Lord have mercy. You spend a huge amount of your money on entertainment. You spend it on entertainment for you, entertainment for the kids, and the situation still doesn't change. Let's go back just a couple months to Christmas. Listen, let's go back just a few months to Christmas. Many poor thinking will overspend during Christmas time and then January, February can barely see above water can barely see above water right and so you spend a huge amount of your money on entertainment instead of impact impactful things and influence a huge amount it could be going out to eat it could be shoes it could be a game that you buy for the kids all the time like over and over right entertainment as opposed to saying, okay, this is my situation. I need a new piece of information to change my situation, to build wealth. But poverty thinking will spend a lot of their money going to games, um, the mall. Listen, guys, I told y'all I used to uh, go to work, shop, uh, shop, party club, go to the mall, do it all over again, right? Paid my bills on time, made good money, was traveling. But what I was doing with my money was not building wealth, right? I was spending it on entertainment and not my growth, not my actual growth. And so when you're using poor thinking, you spend a lot of your money 
on things that entertain you. Like if it doesn't, you, you need to laugh all the time. Like if, if it's not going well, I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be happy in the moment and in your pursuit because you should, right? However, you got to decide if happy, happiness really looks like, how is my life going to be different in two to three years from now where this can be a continuous flow of, you know, well-being, whether it's in my relationships or, you know, in my business. What can I do? What can I invest in time, money, energy, resources so that I could get new answers to, to get a new outcome, right? To create a new future. Um, the next thing, you'd rather get assistance. Now this one, I might lose a follower or two. I might lose a follower or two off of this one. But it will be okay if they'll think about me later and be like, I get it. it I will have done my assignment. You'd rather get assistance than yourself to be the person giving assistance. Go ahead, Mercy. So I had a conversation recently and someone was sharing with me all of these um, programs and things that were available for um, the people in their area that had low income and things of that nature. And I was like, those programs are amazing. You know, that's one of the reasons why I'm building my business so that I can be the person who's making those big, large donations to help people on that level, right? And see, if we never make the mindset shift, we're actually looking for where is it that I can get some assistance? Some of you won't even in increase your income because it's going to put you in a different tax bracket. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I had a client before who, you know, um, would not do the strategies that I was teaching because she knew it would grow her business and she would no longer be able to receive the assistance that she was getting. But guys, don't you want your life to be beyond the tax bracket, beyond the assistance, right? See, that's poor thinking. I told you guys this was going to be heavy. you rather get assistance than position yourself to be the person giving the assistance. And it's two completely different things. You know, sometimes we always looking for a handout or a hookup instead of being the person who can... The, the Bible says you're the lender and not the borrower. You're the lender and not the borrower. So, you know, whenever you find yourself trying to stay in a certain income bracket so that you can maintain the help or the assistance, it's poor thinking. It's poor thinking. Next, poor thinking is when you justify your situation. My gosh, this one is heavy too. When you justify your situation, this is what I mean. You may say things like, oh, money ain't even important. When I hear people say that, I said, somewhere in there, there may be a little poverty thinking going on, right? Sometimes when we say money isn't important, it's to cover up the fact that we, we don't have it or to cover up the fact that we don't know what to do about our situation. And so we start justifying it. It's poor thinking, right? Or when we say things like this, all I need is God. All I need is God. Now, I... God is at the center of everything that I do. He's at the center of everything that I do. He is so important. But he says he gives us the power to get wealth. Let's go back to the one where I said um, poverty thinking will, you know, wants to get assistance instead of being the person that can actually give someone um, assistance. I was sharing. So what happens? And this is where why this is where many of us don't get to the level that we're supposed to get to. This is why we don't gain dominion like we're supposed to. So if you're the person, if you're always trying to qualify for getting the assistance, then you never develop the capacity. Y'all don't hear me for the next level. Because when you shift your goal from being the person to get the assistance to being the person who can give the assistance, it requires a different work ethic. It requires new information. 
it requires a new level of productivity. And what happens in the process of you pursuing greater, you now up-level your capacity. Now, when you up-level your capacity, you now increase your value. Y'all don't hear me. And people pay for value. It's just like um, uh, anybody, maybe a doctor, I used this example before, well, you may go to your normal um, practitioner, practitioner, your normal physician, but if you have something um, really important that you need, they send you to a specialist. And we know the specialist probably had to go to school a little longer. Now, I want to interject before I say the school thing, because I also see, you know, sometimes, and I know this is going to sound real weird, but sometimes poor thinking says, let me keep going back to school and get another degree. Y'all don't hear me because we've equated degrees and titles and things like that with sometimes being wealthy. But it's a lot of people with degrees, certificates, titles, all that stuff who are not wealthy by far, who's still trying to figure it out. Right. So it's about getting the right information. And one of the things I stand by is increasing your value. When you increase your value, you increase your ability to earn revenue. I talked to someone the other day who signed a paper and got a couple G's just for their signature. Y'all don't hear me. Because they increase their value. I'm going to do a, a broadcast um, at some point on increasing your value. But inside the academy, it is set up so that you can up-level the value that you have in the marketplace. Right? Bring awareness to a new whole new sector of people and profit more. That's one of the benefits of joining uh, 3D Success Academy. I help you up-level your value, your perceived value in the marketplace. So never underestimate what going the extra mile actually allows you to do. There's a story about the, um, I took my daughter to a, green, a museum in Greensboro and we did a tour. And the tour guides were telling us about the, the black men who flew planes back, back in the day who are known as like the best airmen around. There was actually a movie done about it. And one of the things that was happening is when they would go to take their test, they would always make the African-American men retake the test over and over again, even though they flew better than their counterparts. And I said, you know, it's an unfortunate thing that sometimes, depending on race, color, creed, things of that nature, you may have to do a little more. But the part that we miss is actually the fact that we have to do a little more means that we actually practice a little more. And we know what practice on the right thing does. We know what intentional practice does, right? It brings perfection. It's part of the perfecting process. So some of the things that the enemy set out for our bad is actually for our good. Because if you're really serious about taking your business and your life to the next level, you're going to have to practice and do some things that the average person is unwilling to do. You're going to have to do some stuff that the average person is unwilling to do. So listen, we justify, I said, we justify our situation. Poor thinking, right? Um, because God gives us the power to get wealth. We'll say, all I need is God. No, God wants you to do, to learn some stuff. Think about the, the scripture in the Bible that talks about the master that left the talents to the people. He left one, 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 five, and one, ten, or two, whatever the numbers were, right? And the person that did the least, he took his and gave it to the person who did the most because he could benefit more, right? And when you are creating another level of value in your personal development, right, you actually increase your capacity to build your brand, right? And God wants to be able to allow us to create platforms of influence that can impact people, like really impact people, right? And it, it comes with the, the stuff that we're willing to, and unwilling to do so some well not sometimes but a lot of times poverty thinking has a lazy spirit behind it it's a lazy spirit behind it listen I get it guys especially when you know especially if you have a gift right and that gift has made room for you but you understand like at this level you're like okay well I still have the same gift but it's not earning the same revenue those gifts need to be cultivated for the next level they need to be cultivated for the next level. So we can have 50 different gifts, but if they aren't cultivated and don't have the capacity for the next level, and then what most of us aren't willing to do is do what's required for that next level. Um, the next thing is, 
Oh, I wanted to talk about what lack really is. So lack is an inability or an unwillingness to manage. Lord have mercy. Somebody share the broadcast. Even if you come back on the replay, share the broadcast. I just dropped the whole money nugget right there. Money nugget, life nugget. Lack is the inability or unwillingness to manage. So we don't know everything. So that comes with our ability. So it's totally understandable that we may not know how to manage something, but we do have choice, right? That's the great thing about inability is you can learn. But lack usually shows up in whatever area. It may be lack, relationships, whatever. It's our inability or our unwillingness to manage it, whether we need to learn to manage it or not. And one of the things we do inside Success Academy as it relates to managing your money is we do a budget, right? We get like real clear on where you are. We create strategies so that you can earn more revenue because I don't believe in just saving because what you, you're saving for what? Where Are you going to invest the money so that you can grow? I think one of the missing principles is how to create revenue. Right, how to create revenue. So, um, an inability or unwillingness to manage. I want to give you guys a definition for manage that I heard that blew all my socks off. All my socks off. And then I'm going to share with you all um, because I heard the definition kind of recent, but the thing that I learned has been quite some time ago, and this one is going to be heavy. So, the, the definition I heard from management is the best one I've heard. It says, the careful treatment and supervision of dealing with another person's property or resources to produce value. I'm going to read that one more time. Management definition. Best one I heard yet. The careful treatment and supervision of dealing with another person's property or resources to produce value. Man, it's so much I could name that goes under that. But let me share this with you guys. So as a little girl, I don't ever remember facing lack. Like I didn't know what it was to go without. You know, we did vacations. Now my parents weren't the richest, but they were using wealth principles and they weren't saved. A lot of the world is using the kingdom principles, right? They were using those principles. I just didn't experience lack as a child. It's not my story, right? I, I can't help. That's not my story. Now, and again, I said it's not because my parents were rich. They were using wealth principles at that time for what they knew, and I just never experienced lack. There were things on my bed when I came home from school, you know, quite often. We went on trips. I didn't hear them arguing about money. However, I did experience lack as an adult. So whatever you may be feeling as it relates to lack, I probably felt it, children. I probably felt it. And one of the things that I did that was an awful habit, and it, 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 it was connected to so many other things, is when I owed the bill collectors, I wouldn't respond. Lord, have mercy. If you've ever done that, even if you come back on, put me in the comments. I wouldn't respond. Like, I wouldn't, you know, answer the phone or, you know, that whole irresponsibility thing, right? I, I wouldn't respond. But when you begin to understand just how much everything that you do impacts someone else, it shifts. When you're really ready to step into a new level of growth everything shifts. Now you're an entrepreneur. Let's think about it because remember, I'll take this back to where we said these thoughts and things that we tend to have about wealthy people. So maybe it's your credit card company or something of that nature. You'd be like, oh, they got, they don't need this little bit of money that I owe them. You might not say it, you know, out loud, but in your mind, you're thinking it ain't really causing them no issues. But if you are an entrepreneur and you look at those companies and those corporations and those ent entities, those are things that you aspire to do. They got all those people that's calling the people that ain't pay their bill. They got to pay the people. They have a family. These are just people who went the, the extra mile beyond what some of us do in our businesses to build something bigger. It's still people. 
It's still people and it's still the same principle and it still has the same reaping and sowing effect. And that's one thing I learned and what happened because I learned that principle and I knew that I would attract things into my life based on how I was being. Not how people in the public were seeing me, but how I was being. When things, you know, because I learned that when things would go awry, I learned to communicate. See, it take you to put your big girl panties on to really be able to own your stuff and communicate even if communication is I just don't have it but the thing about being in that position is knowing that you are creating and doing things to position yourself to have it guys it's so much so much behind that you I'm gonna read the definition of management one more time the careful treatment and supervision of dealing with another person's property or resources to produce value and so when you hear that definition it makes you think how many times how have I dealt with other people's property other people's resources how have I dealt with my own Lord have mercy listen there are several things that we manage we manage our life we manage our business we manage our debts we manage our role in our business. We manage our family, our children, marriage, our health, our emotions. All of those are things that we manage, or we're supposed to manage. And what I do is I help my clients. I help women because I know sometimes things that we've been in before, we haven't been taught how to communicate. We haven't been taught to even be committed to our destiny in a way that's really going to produce a profit. We may have had things that have occurred in our life that cause us to, you know, go back into these cyclic circles. This is what my entire, the Renew Full Circle Consulting is about. This is what 3D Success Academy is about. Helping women develop an abundant mindset, right, that helps them, you know, build a profitable brand, profitable brand and business in their life. So, for those who maybe you have a side hustle or hobby that you want to turn into a business, uh, maybe you know it's time to reinvent your business and your life. Maybe you need to understand branding on a much deeper level, uh, enlarge your impact in the marketplace, uh, your awareness and your profits. That's what I've designed, you know, 3D Success Academy for. And I wanted to take this time so that people could fully understand, like, why I share the things I share, where the heart-centered place that is actually coming from, because I see things that I've had to overcome that women before me, I, I recognize had, well, you know, many of them may not have necessarily overcome it, but I did see change. My uh, grandmother, for instance, she died when she was 49 years old, but she went through so much. I remember my mom sharing how, you know, they moved so often, as, as a little girl and they weren't moving just because hey I'm gonna get a place and move next month or move in three months if you're really thinking it was poverty yeah y'all get that it, it was poverty and so I'm looking at this and I'm listening to the stories of other women in my family and it was something similar and then I noticed the connection with the the horrible relationships and for my grandmother, I also noticed when her life began to change. And she began getting rid of some of the horrible relationships and her whole life changed. It changed the trajectory of her life, my mother's life, my life, right? It impacted us on a much deeper level, although she didn't get to fully live out and see all of the new progress that she was making in her life, I could look back down her timeline and see when things started happening differently for, for her in her life. One, she changed who she was next to. And many of you aren't next to someone who has the capacity to get you to the next level. And so what you're seeing, the conversations that you're having, they're, the, they're your normal conversations. You're not even thinking that what you're doing is irregular. I've been there, right? And so because I've studied this for years and I saw it in my own life and I'm even aware because every level that I want to go to next it requires me to get rid of some type of limiting belief or some wrong thought process that I had because whatever you're thinking is what gets you to the level that you're on right and remember I said if we don't own it we can't fix it 
And many of us can't even own it because we're not aware. And so my goal for today is just to bring a new level of awareness about, you know, poverty thinking and what it actually does, how it holds us back um, in life. The next one is poverty thinking if you got to have the latest. If, if everything trending, you got to have it, the latest iPhone, you know, all that. It, it's, it's poverty thinking. It's like if you... You know, if you're trying to get to your next level, so maybe you're doing really well, but you know you want to get to your next level and you're investing in things that aren't going to get you there the moment you're using poor thinking. Does that make sense? Right? So you don't have a budget, a real plan, um, but you the latest iPhone. I, I, don't, I don't own an iPhone. I do have an iPad, but that was a gift to me. And I can afford an iPhone. It's because, you know, I actually transitioned my business that I had been doing for years that was a measure of security for me, replaced my income off of my droid. Off of my droid. So, I mean, it wasn't a big thing for me when the iPhones came out and my daughter has one, but it was a gift to her that I didn't buy. I'm not buying one. I don't, I feel funny about the cell phone thing for teenagers anyway. But I'm definitely not spending a thousand dollars on a phone. You gonna make some money on the phone? You got a business? <laughs> you know, are you you getting coin? Is your PayPal blinging when you sleep because of it? But I, you know, I was able to do that, you know, off of my joy. But if you, if you gotta have the latest trendy everything, and it's not necessarily impacting your next level, then in that moment you are using poor thinking, poverty thinking. It's a poverty spirit. Next. You don't value personal development. This is huge. Because we weren't really taught to um, work on our personal development. That's not something we were taught, guys. Right? It just so happened um, when I was in junior high going into high school, I, I loved to read books. And, I mean, I don't find it strange now with what I do, but I always read self-help, personal development books. You know, diff we have different tracks in life you know and that just happened to be mine it's just all collectively adding up you know some of the things that I've always done and even for you all so when I'm helping you really determine who you are as a brand you know we kind of walk back through some things that you may have done and they collectively equal out to your superpowers your gifts and your greatness and sometimes they're the things that are uncovered because we're trying to go get to a university, go get another degree. You know, we're trying to open five more businesses without learning the foundational principles of earning and creating money because once you learn those principles, you can then take it to any business, right? And personal development impacts it on a whole nother level because although I am so passionate about what I do and I'm grateful and blessed about how I get to serve, it's some stuff that I have to do in the business that I don't want to do. And my passion doesn't give me the energy to do it, right? It has to go beyond the passion the passion, in order to do those things, those productive things. To um, One of the things that helps me is though I create productivity tools. So that's something else that you learn inside 3D Success Academy. Tools that help you be more productive in a less lesser amount of time. It's, it's just my things. Uh, strategies and systems are my superpowers. I didn't know they were, right, until I started getting coaching and going to conferences and things and understanding what my gifts and superpowers were. I just knew that I could pick other people's out. But sometimes, even though you can pick out other people's, you can see theirs, one of the most difficult things is to actually see your own and get really clear on what you're great at, you know, and your superpowers. But if you don't value personal development, it's normally coming from a space of poverty thinking because what happens is you're often looking for um, a get rich quick opportunity instead of understanding, as I shared before, that if you increase your value, which is through your personal development, that may be the thing that makes you more consistent about answering emails or um, how you communicate with clients, customers, your family, whoever, all of that increases your value. So let's think about it like this. Just think about any particular industry where you know somebody is really, really skilled at a particular skill set, right? But when it's time 
to get chosen for an opportunity, they're not necessarily the person that's chosen for the major opportunities because their personal development doesn't match their skill set. Does that make sense? You guys think about it. If you own a business and you have workers, you may have one who is amazing, but their personal development, their time management, the communication, all that stuff, it just doesn't match their skill set, right? And so when you're wanting to, you know, um, position yourself as an expert and do different things in your brand, your personal development got to match your skill set for you to get the bigger, greater opportunities. Well, let me take that back because you can get the bigger, greater opportunities, but for them to be consistent, for you to be able to sit at the table once you get in the door, it requires, you know, personal development. And that's not always easy because we have to look at ourselves, right? But one of the things that wealthy people understand is that every time they grow personally, it impacts how they grow financially as well and in the level of fulfillment in their life. Let's think about this. There's a scripture. I wrote down a couple scriptures. That says, um, there's one in particular that says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And all three of those things are things that we find in personal growth that we learn to manage, as we talked about before. Our mind, you know, what we're thinking, our will, the will to do it. Because, you know, when you have an amazing skill set, but you're still kind of getting looked over, it may be like people might be saying, yeah, they're real good, but I don't know if I can trust them to stand in front of those people and be on time or whatever the case may be, right? And it's all like these internal things and, you know, poverty thinking will keep us um, in this state where we don't want to do the work. But we talk about what we don't have all the time or we talk about how other people are charging too much or whatever the case may be. But they're probably charging based on their value. They're probably charging based on the work ethic and the measure of um, investment they've done. In, in being able to fulfill the needs of people who would find it that valuable. And I'm going to move over to abundant mindset because I don't want to leave you with just looking at some ways or things that you may not have thought about. I didn't think about them, guys. and I learned them. I was willing to look at my life and say, oh, you have been thinking like that. You have been doing that. You know, even the get rich quick. So, you know, we'll go, you know, do the lottery. Um, we only choose opportunities that we think are going to happen really quickly. And they never really happen. One, because we're not developing the capacity to be able to function at the next level because the get rich quick thing doesn't require you to, to develop. It, it doesn't. Right. So we skip the work part. And y'all know it said man don't work, don't eat. But um, here's some things about abundance. Remember I say if you don't own it, you can't fix it. And I understand that you can't own what you aren't aware of. And so my goal on today was the three things. One, for those who may be offended sometimes when I post, I don't mean any harm. I pray that you will listen, be blessed by it. But if not, I understand. Everybody ain't for everybody. Number two, for those of you who are impacted by it, I came on to share tools and concepts with you where you can now be more aware and cast down those you know thoughts that you're having and redirect and shift and do something different to get different results and three to be able to give you an opportunity to um, come to our 3d success Academy actually I have um, some promotional investment costs available until the 26th maybe that's what Wednesday of next week there are four payment options at this time one of them will leave so there's a one-time investment that you save a tremendous amount on uh, to pay a monthly and a weekly so the weekly option won't be available again after the 26th prices will go up on the 26th as well so if you have not had a time a chance to go to the link go to the the link check it out look at the different payment options if you have some questions um, you can shoot me a question um, if you're ready, if you're ready to take action and you know um, I enjoy what she's sharing, but I want it on a deeper level. I need to actually work on these things. I need the tools and the resources to be able to up level 
you know, everything in my life and my business, you can sign up today. You will immediately get some um, trainings. You'll be added to a list. You'll get some trainings. And we start March the 1st with you actually getting what's going to come out every month. So what happens every month, we have a different topic. Um, I wish I had um, pulled that up. But one is called the Prosperity Portal, where we talk about your money ceiling. And that's the ceiling that's keeping you from hitting that new income goal. We figure out what that thing is and then create strategies for you to be able to maneuver more abundantly, create and attract more abundance into your life. We do um, a budget. So for those of you who are looking for debt freedom, I actually created a program years ago to get out of debt and open my first brick and mortar service based business debt free and remain debt free you know the entire 10 years that I owned it and I teach those concepts and tools uh, in that as well but we also look at your pricing for your services and your products that you have so that you can price your services properly as a premium brand attract premium clients and you know get more profits in your business we have a portal which is super awesome called um, destiny by design and that's where we look at where you really design life and you can think from an abundant space when you're creating that we reverse engineer it and create strategies marketing branding things of that nature um, that are actually going to get you there and we look at you know your whole life where you get an opportunity to look at your whole life uh, how it works is you are the videos or trainings are given to you every single week you'll get a new training and then the week after i do a live coaching session so if you have questions about how to implement the information then i come on and i do live group coaching um, you can send me emails to ask me questions throughout um, and that's pretty much how it works we have productive rest months so productive rest months are july and december where we don't have new information coming into the portals or live coaching it gives you an opportunity to get caught up on what we've been doing the the, the months prior um, and then also if you have new questions you know you can but I think productive rest is important I think it's important that we schedule breaks um, we schedule time to reflect and reposition and I chose July when you come back and start getting new uh, information that next month you'll be heading into the last quarter of the year you'll be prepared for that and then December time for holiday, family if you choose, um, but also a time to prepare for that next year. And then every fifth week in the month, we have a productive rest week. So it'll be no training, no coaching on that particular week as well. But it's an amazing opportunity. Like I've been so excited about it. It's the reason why I haven't been coming on live because I wanted to make sure that, you know, everything was everything for when you guys began um, to join. It is an investment. It is for those who are really serious about going to their next level, who understand that they need to invest and who are looking for someone who has the capacity to, to get them there. They understand value. They value personal development. So maybe you didn't as much before this video, but you see the importance of it. Um, we talk about abundance mindset, personal growth, and business building. It's founded on three core principles, your destiny, your dollars, and the disciplines that we need in order to get there. I know discipline sound a little masculine, guys, but it's really just about creating systems that um, allow you to work smarter and not harder, and then committing to those uh, to seeing the results. But now, renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA. I'd love to support you, have you join us. Um, won't be long before the cutoff and the prices and stuff change, so... Um, another thing, sometimes poverty thinking waits, and they usually pay more than everybody else. Um, the ability to make uh, great decisions quickly is one of the things that an entrepreneur needs to learn how to do or know how to do. So if you know that you're ready, I would love to have you in with us um, and for the weekly option, it will go away. Like, I won't offer an opportunity to pay weekly. There's a deposit of $3.97 for monthly and weekly. And I think the weekly is like $73 a week. The cost of dinner or a game you might get for your kids or, um, you know, some piece of shopping you do every week that you may not think about that will never 
have the capacity to get you to to your next level. I think that investing in yourself and being in an incubator of this capacity for a year is priceless. Your whole life can be barely recognizable in a year's time of, of focus. And that's one of the things that it allows you to do to really focus on you and your business on another level. But abundant thinking. One of the things I know kingdom-wise is the enemy wants us to be ignorant. He wants us to walk around and just not know and thinking we win and, and thinking that we know it. And, and I learned that. I was like, man, wow, I've been thinking this, she's been thinking this, all of us been thinking this, and we've been doing this whole thing wrong. But one thing about an abundant mindset is it takes responsibility because it's no longer the victim. It's abundance. I can. I'm, it's, it's possible. Um, I'm capable. It takes on this whole new mindset that allows them to remember I said, you know, sometimes it's not about what happens to us in life, but how we handle it, right? Because some things happen beyond our control. But when we develop an abundant mindset, it becomes how we handle it. Number two, you can always gain the ability to do something. This is abundant thinking. So I don't know how it turns into I can learn. Y'all yeah, don't hear me. When you shift into that mindset, it changes the trajectory of your life and your business. Number three, when you want, whenever you want to complain, you turn it into action. So one of the things I do stuff, it happens, right? That frustrates me. I'm, I might feel overwhelmed in that moment. But I'll shift and say, okay, what action can I take? Okay, this is the situation. Now what action can I take? So that might mean that you need to market more or whatever the case may be. It may mean that you need to reevaluate that toxic relationship. What is it, right? Instead of um, allowing complaining to be who I am, right, or, or my level of thinking, I turn it into action. I say, okay, I boohooed, I cried, whatever the case may be. Now what is it that I need to do? How can I turn this into an action that's going to be great for the future you know help me to create this future bigger than my past next the abundant mindset wants to be in a position to give so i'm just counteracting the poverty thinking thoughts that i share with you all so the abundant mindset wants to be in a position to give so it's not always looking for um a handout now it doesn't mean that we aren't wise about how we're spending, about, you know, lessening the work time if we can to create the same, you know, the same or more in, in money or revenue. But we're not letting, um, we're creators more than we are waiting or being the victim, right? That's the abundant mindset. That's how it thinks. Number five, the abundant mindset becomes aware of the situation instead of justifying it. Remember I shared before that, you know, usually poor thinking is always trying to justify the situation. Guys, I've been there blaming everything on everybody. So one was my spouse. So I was in I told you guys that I didn't remember struggling as a child, but as an adult, I did. And there were some things that I wanted my ex-husband and I to be in agreement on that we weren't in agreement on. So I would kind of complain to my girlfriends. And this one girlfriend, you remember I told you we have these different girlfriends that we tell different stuff. I couldn't tell her that anymore. <laughs> but she said, okay, I understand that he's not, but that doesn't mean that you can't. And it really helped us as a couple but even still, if I had done it earlier, it would have helped me as an individual. So I stopped justifying why we weren't where we said we wanted to be in a certain amount of time and putting it off on somebody else. And I started saying, what is it that I can do? Right. I started taking responsibility. Um, the abundant mindset wants new information, strategies for greater. They buy with purpose. So remember I shared that, you know, the Poor thinking is often looking to get trends and all the trendy stuff or whatever, but the abundant mindset wants the new, they want new things, but they want the new information that's going to help them grow. They want the new equipment if it's going to help them grow. And then it has to make sense. And then they want new strategies for greater. So they're not as into um, the being the first one in the Apple line, you know, I don't even know how the process goes, so. 
I'm just going on here to say, look at me, assuming. But I know I see people lining up in line, you know, for the new iPhone and all of that. So, I mean, of course, there are business owners who have iPhones. Yeah, I'm not saying that. Um, but that is their thing of choice and they're earning revenue, you know, from it. It's, it's make, they're putting it to use, right? Um, even luxury items for someone with abundant thinking becomes a part of purpose. So sometimes when you may see someone extremely wealthy riding in a luxury car, they have a big humongous home. Some of it, guys, is not always about I just needed that next new thing. Because there is a mindset, there's a feeling, a flow, and a frequency to certain items. For instance, when I had my retreat, it was important to me that I was in a space where the women felt amazing. Because environment is huge for transformation. So sometimes when you see people, you know, who have purchased new things or whatever, sometimes it's not even about um, what you think it's about. Sometimes it's about staying in flow, staying in a wealth mindset, staying in abundance mindset. They most they may house um, events and charity events at their home and things of that nature, right? So a lot of times when um, wealthy are purchasing things, they're purchasing it based on who they are, where, where they are mentally and emotionally, and the things that they're actually doing in their lives, for instance. So I'm in a three-bedroom home now, and I look to purchase um, soon, and I'm, you know, thinking four-bedroom. So I have an office, but it rolls over as, you know, my guest room now, and so I want just the office. But, you know, when you understand business, you understand, too, that those things are well, it doesn't really roll over as a, a, a guest room because we don't have anybody in in there. All It's my office. But if someone was to come and stay with us, then, you know, that would be the space that they would stay in. But I want a space where even if someone was to come, they wouldn't have to go into my office, you know, to make that go down. So you got to know that sometimes things that people are getting that may feel like luxury to other people, which four bedroom is, you know, not necessarily luxury to most but um, it's it's for purpose. It has like a bigger purpose. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to share. Oh, number nine, the abundant mindset places a high value on personal development. They know it is the thing that helps them sustain at each new level, at each new level. I pray that this has been a blessing to you guys. Thank you for those of you who came on, you know, had the conversation with me. Um, shared with other people if you come back in the comments let me know your city state um, where you rock out at what type of business you have how do you serve in the marketplace and I would love for you to go and click the link it's probably at the top of this broadcast to join us inside 3d success Academy it's gonna be fire it's gonna be amazing your entire life and business will change and I've created the um, the trainings so that they're practical profitable and doable and um, the timing I thought about the timing I thought about the fact that many of you are busy entrepreneurs so all of that has been implemented but uh, the amazing part is that you also have um, coaching with me so there's live coaching and connection with me throughout that time you also for those of you who pay in full you get a huge discount on things like our retreats and classes and courses that are outside of the academy so go check it out but um, in order for us to shift to abundant thinking sometimes we got to know um, if we have like poverty thoughts or there's a spirit of poverty that's been holding us back from actually getting to the next level you guys have a super super amazing day I'm not sure when I'll come back on live again but I did want to bless you guys I hadn't seen you in a while <laughs>